ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நமக வி நவ் கம் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தர் இஸ் எ ஃபர்ம் பர்மனண்ட் சப்ஸ்ட்ராக்டம் கால் சச்சித் ஆனந்த அன் லேயர்ஸ் பீங் கிரியேட்டட் ஓவர் இட் ஹென்ஸ் ஃபோர்த் we will substitute the expression satchitananda as brahman that's the usage commonly known to everybody and therefore we will also start using this usage address satchitananda as brahman and two we have been talking about the experiencer as this satchitananda we will now substitute the expression experiencer as witness or illuminator see if we start day one saying it's a witness it will lead to confusion so we use the expression experiencer to begin with so there is something called brahman which had existed before us and would exist after us because that's that's the inference we drew even in the first day then it's conscious on its own it doesn't require it is self luminous and third feature is it is ever on bliss and that was one confusion which we sought to resolve it by saying that after all don't we love ourselves the most in contrast to anything else which may we may like which will give we will reach we will continue to like as long as they give us happiness but when it comes to self when it comes to our own whether it is good bad evil or suffering or joy we continue to love ourselves so it's inherent so this brahman is something beyond us is something which we can at the moment logically infer and we now found layers being imposed to this now the question is why this difference between ishvara jiva and matter which again we saw in the second or the third days discussion that when this brahman reflects on maya on and stays on the platform of pure sattva it is ishvara impure sattva mixed with rajas and tamas dominating it becomes jivas and when tamas dominates over the rest they become matter now ignore the difference and ignore the contradictions that's one way we apply even in our regular life let's cite an illustration see somebody known to us was born in india read in a school and college and went to say us for 30 years and he comes back what do we say he is the same person who is now come back don't we say so and we relate so many things yeah he read this he did this he did that there then he traveled there we keep analyzing so many details ultimately to only emphasize one fact it is the same old gentleman who was born here and he has come back here all other details are becomes non essential once we come to this truth so we keep discarding the irrelevance even though we keep referring to it only to know what is the underlying truth this is this happens to us in many things so what does it logically drive us to wheel out or peel out the indifferences then you will see something as truth something as a fact apply the same peel out the reflection of sattva reflection of brahman and sattva as ishvara ignore that the reflection dominated by rajas as jiva ignore that and the reflection of tamas resulting in matters if you can peel out these contradictions 
won't we reach to the underlying substratum called brahman otherwise it is the same they get reflected through different platforms and therefore project different outputs which we saw as the causal body subtle body and the gross body and the five sheets and its own illusions which it produces so we have brahman which is truth and these layers compositions permutations as projections why because of ignorance because of a uh, deception and because of a projected appearance now vedanta teaches all of us how to know how to get out of this indifference as we say in a, when it comes to a man we analyze so many facts to say he is to come to the conclusion he is the same individual vedanta gives you the way to explore how to come out of this indifference how to understand that this is nothing but an illusion how to discard it now it basically project you it says two ways are possible stick to brahman as a truth and logically arrive at a conclusion rest on only illusions or start with the, the fact premise that all this is nothing but illusion and keep exploring in your journey to arrive at the truth that brahman is the real fact so one is called concordance another is called discordance let's let's avoid these terms these are all these are you can start either from that end to reach here or start from here to reach there both are permissible and the process steps are classified broadly into four the first step is shravanam which means hearing about it then two mananam cogitation probabilizing it okay oh it looks to be probable but conviction won't happen by just uh, see cogitation then if conviction has to happen we move to the third stage called concentration viditiyasana and this conviction if it has to mature into reality then it teaches you how to get into the state of samadhi or equipoise now when you reach this stage of samadhi what happens is see we started knowing why this difference because of ignorance because of maya because of avidya because of the projections because of deceptions all this all this interferences the interjections the interruptions all this will wither away if one gets into a state of deep samadhi it will destroy impediments and once impediment goes then the truth which is brahman starts shining on its own and we become a realized soul and this samadhi is reached only by one doing more and more of punyam and more and more of efforts through the guidance of a guru together they take you to this exalted position and once you reach that stage of samadhi you enter a phase called pure dharma what do you mean by pure dharma colorless dharma it's neither good nor bad neither punya nor papa you become neutral and liquidate all your old bandages and to, so that truth sprouts out of you and you manifest yourself as nothing but truth this is what vedanta seeks to teach us and this first chapter just gives a birds eye view of what we are going to uh, know in the future discussions in the coming days let's start the new lesson tomorrow shri guru bio namaha we saw yesterday that the jiva is made up of three parts 
the causal body, the subtle body and the gross body. Now, we will try to understand it slightly differently. These three bodies comprises out of five sheets. That's the expression used by philosophers and people who have realized it. The outermost sheet is called the Annamaya Kosha, the body which sustains out of food, which we otherwise call it as the gross body. The next three layers or sheets is called the Pranamaya Kosha, namely breath, Manonmaya Kosha, namely mind, and Vijnanamaya Kosha, namely intellect. So Prana, a product of Rajas, and mind and buddhi or intellect products of sattva, all the three put together, including the sensory organs, make up the subtle body. And we finally come to the Anandamaya Kosha, the zone of peace, zone of happiness, zone of joy, zone of pleasantness which is nothing but the causal body, where the jiva reflects on the basic plank or platform, what we called it as avidya. So, out of the five sheets, the first causal sheet is out of the five the purest and therefore the most happiest. Then down we go, we finally reach the human body the gross body state. Now, we have two positions which we should now understand clearly. Day one, we understood there is something called Satchit Ananda which is independent and different of these five sheets because it exists in me, it exists in you, it exists in a stone, it exists everywhere because it has been existing even before we were born. Now, our question is, all right, we don't see it, we don't feel it, we don't realize it, and why should we believe it? That's the question for which they started to answer us saying, distortion as one reason, ignorance leading to distortion, and something which appears over the distorted object as though it is real. Now, functionally, how does it actually give an output? It's simple. These five sheets put together, along with the sensory organs, they have one tendency, the tendency to look outwards, the tendency to look towards material or universal happiness, the tendency to enjoy. Therefore, these five sheets or the three types of bodies, you can assimilate it in whichever way you want. Through the sensory organs, through the mind, through the buddhi, starts looking everything outwards. This is how it is by nature made up of. Consequently, go back to the old illustration, a lamp which is completely uh, 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 concealed by an opaque glass, in which case we will simply not understand or see or look for or search Satchidananda. Or a lamp which is translucent, where we think it is nothing but the flame is attributable to the glass. That happens to all of us because when the jiva is capable of tran transcending through all the five sheets. Some believe body, body care is good enough. It starts, every life starts with body and ends with body. Somebody may say, no, it is prana, it is mind, it is buddhi. Somebody may also say, no, it is ananda. But 
all these fractions passing through these layers are all again jiva looking through these objects and organs and instruments outward so no sight no belief no conviction we are simply all of us most of us are only in that state that's why we tend to believe universe is real body is real mind is real when they are all nothing but reflected objects mirage illusions appearances which we will as we progress further and further you will come to know about it now what is the solution that's the question now they say the whole idea when the tendency is to look outwards one has to reverse the process and start slowly looking inwards only then there is a way to reach and identify cognize or believe or feel or experience satchitananda so how do we do it here comes the most important guidance from the others they say up to this logic helps you rational mind helps you your ability or ego to understand helps you you can up to this stage analyze it clinically but to reverse the process it's not simply academic or by le- le- reading or learning it happens there you need the guidance of a teacher who has already done it who has already reached that sacred spot of satchidananda who is already an evolved soul knows the way knows his way to reach and knows which way is suitable for you to reach and therefore the guidance of a spiritually evolved guru becomes essential one portion is abstract understanding of logic but if you want to translate this logic into reality then you need to have the blessings of a guru is what these scriptures very clearly say therefore the whole journey is to reverse what we seem to be looking outward how do we start seeing inward let's see tomorrow shri guru bhyo namaha we saw yesterday about distortion distortion as a platform or a plank in the case of god or ishwara we call it as maya and when it happens to us we call it as avidya and there is a third category which we saw yesterday as matters now what are the five principal matters it's simple see we are able to react with this universe to enjoy or suffer five basic experiences ears through which we hear tongue through which we taste nose through which we smell eyes through which we see and the skin through which we feel the touch so universe has to respond with these when we are able to gain this five experiences there must be something which comes from the universe therefore we have five principal matters what are these five principal matters akasha or space which produces sound then comes vayu or air which produces the feel of touch then comes tejas or fire or agni which produces form then comes water which produces taste and finally prithvi or earth which produces smell so these are the five elements basic elements which which we call it as matter so we have three positions now let us see how the permutation works from distortion we move to the next plank called appearance this is the example cited 
you have sun rays sun rays by itself does not burn a cotton or a paper but if you insert a lens in between the material and the rays then when it when the rays flow through the lens we get the feeling that it's finally getting burnt so lens <coughs> acts as a platform by nature sun automatically does not burn it produces heat it shows light but it doesn't burn automatically but when you insert the lens it happens same is the case when you insert the plank called avidya or maya philosophers identify this as the first body called the causal body the cause the for the whole universe to emerge so distortion coupled with an appearance totram so this appearance is in the form of what we call it maya or avidya the basic platform but it does not stop with that this causal body proceeds to produce two more bodies along with it what is called as the subtle body and the gross body what do we mean by the subtle body when it comes to our own selves the jiva these matters <clears throat> have again three qualities sattva rajas and tamas from the qualities from the quality of sattva from each of these matter it produces the five sensory organs namely eyes ears nose tongue and the skin this is not what we see externally this is first seen internally the protrusion is just gross we are now talking at the subtle form so these five matters the sattva part of the five matters produces these five sensory organs in us now individually collectively they produce what is called the mind and also the intellect so sattva produces these three elements the rajas part of these five matters produces the five karmendriyas or actions organs of actions legs hands mouth then the excretory organ and the sexual organ and they produce individually each one of the matter produces one particular organ and collectively they produce what is called the prana or the breath which again is of five types pranan apanan vyanan udanan and samanan now we have actually 17 components as our subtle body within us the five sensory organs ear nose tongue eyes and the skin the five organs of action legs hands mouth the excretory organ and the sexual organ five types of prana pana prana pana apana udana samana and the mind and the intellect together they constitute 17 items in fact mind is also split as mind and chittam and uh, uh, intellect is split as intellect and ahankara making it 19 also whatever it is together they appear as our subtle body the same thing <clears throat> happens with universe too avidya the platform which is the subtle body now through the combinations of this creations of jivas and matters results in the subtle body for the universe too 
Now, how do you grade the universe, compare universe with us? It's like this. Take a case of a whole forest. As collectively, they are a forest. And individually, they are trees, shrubs, and plants. Collectively, we call this as a body. But hand is a part of the body. Leg is a part of the body. But hands and legs are exclusive to themselves. That is the difference between the individual jiva and the universe as such. So, universe also has a subtle body. Now comes finally the gross body. It is not enough if we have these 17 organs. These organs must be put into use. So you need an external sheath. And therefore, from out of these five basic matters, through a combination, we finally get a cross body. And the universe also, through a combination, see this matter, let's take one example, then you can multiply the same five way. The five matters which we saw as space, Akasha, Arvayu, then Tejas, then Apas, and finally Prithvi, the Earth. When you take one half of Akasha and one fourth of the rest of the four and then mix it together as a combination, it becomes a gross Akasha. Likewise, so you have a gross body for the universe, a subtle body for the universe, and, yeah, and uh, a causal body which is avidya, uh, which is maya. We have a gross body, the external body which all of us carry. Within this external body, there are 17 subtle bodies, 17 items which constitute one subtle body. And that subtle body has a plank, the, the seated on a plank, what we call it as avidya or ignorance. So ignorance produces two factors, namely distortion and also a factor where all these items start appearing over it through a combination of these five principal matters. Let's continue tomorrow.